Jesus, we worship you and we adore you, Lord. We lift your name on high. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, Jesus. Jesus. There is none like you, Lord, in all the earth. We just worship you in this place. We give you praise. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Yours is the kingdom, Lord. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. I want to share a verse of scripture from the Psalms. It's a priestly psalm. The priests were set aside. They were the tribe set aside. They were anointed to stand in the gap, to stand as priests. And this priestly psalm says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the Jew of Hermon, and as the Jew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. There's so much to that. The priests were called to come together. Sacrifices were made. Restitution was made before God. And they would come together. Not just come together. They would sit at a table together. They would eat together. They would fellowship together. And the presence of God would come. The Holy Spirit would come. And healing would begin to happen. Prophecy could begin to happen. When the Holy Spirit shows up, things change. There was a sacrifice made. There was a fivefold sacrifice. And these men, these priests, who stood before the Lord, would come together in fellowship at the table. And the presence of God would come. And things would start to happen. And he says, behold how good, how tov, how good. He goes back to Genesis 1. How good and how pleasant it is in the presence of God for brethren to dwell together in unity. And this is what the psalmist said it's like. It is like the precious ointment. Now what could that mean prophetically? The ointment is a symbol of conferring power and authority upon someone. A king was anointed. A prophet was anointed. A priest was anointed. And ultimately the oil is a symbol of the power and authority that comes with the Holy Spirit as he comes upon a person to prophesy, to stand in the gap as a priest, to operate in authority as a king. It is like the precious ointment, the Spirit of God upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, the high priest, the one above them all. And I want to declare to you, there is a high priest that we tell you of, the anointed one, the Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, who came and lived the life that we should have lived. He died the death that we should have died. He, is, he had the anointing without measure, the ultimate and final high priest. But look what the psalmist says prophetically. It ran down, the anointing ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. In other words, there is authority under the commandments and word of God that Jesus obeyed the commandments of God perfectly. And those under the authority of the Messiah, the anointed one, Jesus, who live under his authority, that anointing comes down upon you. If the anointing is poured upon the high priest and you are under the authority of the high priest, the anointing comes upon you. But there is a lack of understanding about anointing. People just see it as oil. They don't see what the oil represents. The oil is merely a shadow of the reality of the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. Jesus went about doing miracles. He healed the sick. He cast out devils. He turned over the tables of evil. He changed things miraculously and supernaturally. And those under his authority have a degree of that power. That's why those under the authority of Jesus, under that same anointing, when brethren to dwell together in unity, when we have communion together, we see the power of God to heal. We see the power of God to save to the uttermost those who believe. We see the power of God giving utterance to prophesy. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not just a doctrine. He is a felt reality. He is one to be experienced because how good and how pleasant it is 
to dwell together in unity. Amen. And the Bible calls us priests of the Most High God and generation of kings and priests. We live under that anointing. We live under that power. But it's so good and pleasant. I have seen and experienced healing miracles. I have seen and experienced the power of prophecy. I have seen the power of God to break the power of evil. To send demons fleeing. I have seen demons come out of people. That's the reality of this good and pleasant anointing that comes down upon the head of the ultimate high priest, the final high priest, Jesus and therefore upon his people in accordance with his word the anointing comes down upon the hem of the garment upon the commandments upon the words and those who live according to the words of jesus live under that anointing under that power that's why we see god do amazing things and I'm not saying that somehow this is some magic cure for all ills, that everything will be perfect. Christians go through tribulations and troubles, but we know that we still see miracles, we still see life transformation, we still see the Holy Spirit break the yoke of bondage. We walk under that authority. And can I ask you a pertinent question? Have you experienced that power? Have you experienced that anointing? Have you experienced that power to break the bondage of sickness? Have you experienced that power to cause you to prophesy? Have you experienced that power to break a stronghold of evil? Have you seen that power to break drug addiction? Have you seen that power to break the stronghold of mental torment? I have seen these things. I have seen what the Holy Spirit does. And I stand before you today as a former atheist who when I was 20 years old I didn't believe that God existed but not only do I declare that God existed and still exists but I declare to you that Jesus is the Messiah the anointed one the final high priest upon which the anointing comes without measure and those under the authority of Christ do works like his they see miracles they see the supernatural and God wants you to experience how good and how pleasant it is to be in unity with his people a royal priesthood a particular a separated people unto him who live under the anointing and under the power of that same spirit that the psalmist prophesied of you are not meant to live simply in a life of religiosity or just not modernity and hu chasing humanism or chasing religion but live under a living experience of the Holy Spirit this is what Jesus promised whoever believes in me whoever comes to me out of his inmost being, being would flow rivers of living water Amen. that is the promise of Jesus that out of you would flow rivers of living water the Holy Spirit will flow to you and through you and to other people that is what Jesus did and that's what he's called us to do and that's the invitation today that those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will not only be saved but be a conduit of the Spirit of God now Jesus sent one of his apostles one of his messengers a man called Peter to speak to a Roman centurion in the book of Acts chapter 10 and he preached how that Jesus is the Messiah the anointed one how Jesus died on the cross for our sin how Jesus rose from the dead and whoever puts their trust in him will be saved and the witness says that as he was yet preaching the Spirit of God fell upon all those who believed and they begin to speak in other other tongues and other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. As soon as they believed, the power of the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Man. Pagans, Romans, centurions, people who are living outside of the kingdom were suddenly brought into the kingdom. How? They believed in the message of Jesus, who is the Christ, crucified and raised from the dead. The moment they believed, the power fell upon them. And the Holy Spirit began to work through them. This promise, as the, as the prophet said, is available, as the prophet Joel said, to all those who believe and all those who are afar off. To your sons and daughters, to men and women, to all whom the Lord shall call. 
you can experience his same power because Jesus is not just a doctrine Jesus is not just some historical figure but Jesus is the anointed one and those under his authority experience that same anointing that same anointing that casts out devils that same anointing that breaks drug addiction that breaks same anointing that breaks the power of depression and sickness that same anointing you can experience because Jesus saves to the uttermost he is the anointed one hallelujah Praise the Lord. and he is simply a prayer of faith away <laughs> simply a prayer of faith away if you believe that Jesus is the Christ who died on the cross for your sin and rose from the dead and you call upon his name, you can be saved. You can be filled with his spirit. And that same anointing that came upon Jesus Hallelujah. and upon the apostles and upon his true believers will come upon you. And you can dream dreams and prophesy and operate in this same power. It is a gift of God. To whom? To all who call upon his name. Amen. Praise God.